Okay, moving on to the next segment of today's show. I wanted to entertain the question of who had the most impressive win of week five of the NFL season. And I think for me, throughout all the great games we had this past weekend, there are really four teams in particular that really stand out as a possible answer to this question. The first team that I will say is the Cleveland Browns. And if you listen to this show, you guys know I've been talking about the Cleveland Browns and how exactly I think they were going to do uh, throughout this season, really since the draft and when they hired Kevin Stefanski. I was really, really high on the hire of Kevin Stefanski. And I think you're really being showed right now how big of an impact he is making on the Cleveland Browns. I think this is the least hectic energy I've ever seen from the Cleveland Browns, literally since I've started watching the game of football. Cleveland right now is sitting with a record of 4-1, and one, and for me, I consider them to be a legitimate playoff contender in the AFC. And the fact that they took on the Indianapolis Colts at home and got the win by a final score of 32-23 to 23 is just a super, super impressive win for Cleveland. And I think when you, look of, uh, when you look at the question of, okay, who had the most impressive win of week five of the NFL season, I do think Cleveland is definitely a candidate because number one, even though Indianapolis' defense was super banged up and the game was in Cleveland, I get all that. Um, Indianapolis historically is known to be one of the better, well-run franchises in the NFL. And I actually still believe that is the case to this day. They have one of the better offensive lines in the league, even without Darius Leonard, they have one of the better defenses in the league. And I was just super impressed the way Cleveland took control of that game right away and how they really made Indianapolis Colts quarterback, Phillip Rivers, pay for his mistakes. He had a safety. He had a pick six in this game. It just really was not fun to watch at all if you were a fan of the Indianapolis Colts. And in terms of Cleveland, I mean, there's a lot to be excited about because you saw this offense go into Dallas last week, put up 49 points, and they were able to get the job done against the Cowboys. And the funny thing about that game was, even though Baker Mayfield wasn't great, I don't think he has to be great when he's playing around these Cleveland Browns. I think Kevin Stefanski so far this season has put Cleveland in a very successful position to succeed because when you look at their running game, you know, Nick Chubb is hurt, but you're you're seeing Kareem uh, Hunt and Dernis Johnson get the job done on the ground game, you know? You're seeing many other guys come through for Cleveland. In this game, when you look at the stats... Baker Mayfield went 21 of 37, 247 yards, two touchdowns and two picks. Yes, you would want to see that interception number go lower, but Cleveland really just punched Indianapolis in the mouth and the game wasn't really the same since. And the reason why I consider this win to be so impressive, a couple reasons. Number one, Cleveland, this is a game they usually don't win. Even at home, especially against a team like Indianapolis, the Colts usually find a way to win these games, but Cleveland was able to come out on top. That's number one. Number two, the Browns' defense, I understand Phillip Rivers is washed. He's not a very good quarterback right now, but Cleveland's defense made a mockery of him in this game, and I was super impressed with that as well. And then finally, when you look at the way Miles Garrett has been playing over the last couple weeks, there are not many players in in the NFL on defense that could win you a game by themselves. I actually think Miles Garrett is one of those players, and I'm just more and more impressed with his uh, efforts every time I watch him. Um, so Cleveland is definitely a candidate for the team that had the most impressive win of week five. How about the Miami Dolphins? We spoke a lot about um, the San Francisco 49ers in the previous segment, but I wanted to get into Miami a little bit because I think Brian Flores deserves a lot of credit for the job that he's done since he's uh, gotten to be the head coach of the Dolphins. I was just super impressed with the way the Dolphins were able to go into San Francisco and really punch the Niners in the mouth. For me, that game just was never really competitive at all. And if you're a fan of the Miami Dolphins, the fact that your team was able to go across the country and get the job done against the defending NFC champions, super impressive. Really watching this game, you kind of got the sense that the game was going to be over by halftime, you know, Miami was up 30-7 to at the half, and I really never expected San Francisco to come back from there. 
In this game, Ryan Fitzpatrick, 22 of 28, 350 yards, three touchdowns, and a 99.1 quarterback rating. Miles Gaskin has done a really good job for this Miami Dolphins team running the football. Devontae Parker and Preston Williams each had big games in the receiving uh, unit, plus Mike Kosicki is turning into the, uh, one of the better tight ends in the NFL. Miami's defense is still a work in progress, but I think they do have some guys that I think are able to get the job done, and that showed in this game against San Francisco. Now, when you look at Miami, I don't know if they're a playoff contender in the AFC, but at the same time, they have played well and better than expected, getting the road win over Jacksonville, getting the road win over San Francisco, competing and only losing by eight to the Seattle Seahawks, only losing by three to the Buffalo Bills, uh, two of the better teams in the NFL right now. And Miami has a real opportunity to move the needle with a home win on Sunday against the New York Jets. If they could somehow get that win, they're looking at three and three into uh, going into a three-game stretch, home against the Rams, at Arizona, home against the Chargers. If you're if Miami is able to go three and one in their next four games, which would bring their record to five and four, I think maybe Miami could be a contender in the AFC to maybe make the playoffs. Now, do I think it's likely? No. Do I think long term, you know, it may be the best thing for the franchise to maybe keep Ryan Fitzpatrick out there on the field until they really feel comfortable that Tua Tagovailoa is ready to go? Yeah, I think until the Dolphins really start hitting the a, a snide or a or a tough path and lose a couple games in a row, you're still going to be playing Ryan Fitzpatrick until you really uh, get a chance to see all right, like this isn't working. We have to put the kid in. But right now, this Miami Dolphin team, I believe, has the best chance to win with Ryan Fitzpatrick under center. I love the way Xavier Howard and Byron Jones have been playing so far this season. It obviously sucks that the defensive tackle, Devon Godshow, had a bicep tear. But I was super impressed with Miami's win against um, uh, the 49ers. So they're a contender for me. How about the Seattle Seahawks going for a home win against the Minnesota Vikings. This was a crazy game. They were down 13 to nothing at the half. They were then down by five when the Minnesota Vikings had a huge uh, fourth and one call deep in Seattle territory towards the end of the game. And ultimately it would have, it was um, the, excuse me, it was the, uh, Russell Wilson hitting DK Metcalf for the game winning touchdown and Seattle ended up getting the victory. And it was a super impressive victory for the Seahawks. They ended up getting the job done. They win it by a final score of 27 to 26. And the thing about Seattle is I was super impressed with the way their defense played in this game, especially late getting that fourth and one stop. I'm not going to get on Mike Zimmer for deciding to go for it there. It was really the only option considering when you look at the Minnesota Vikings right now, they're a one in four football team. They're not really going anywhere anytime soon with a loss in this game. And you trust your running back and your offensive line who played pretty well through out the game to get the job done. Unfortunately for Minnesota, that didn't happen. But I was just so impressed with Seattle in this game because they were down 13 to nothing at half. And in a snap, Russell Wilson was able to put up, you know, um, 21 points to give Seattle the lead. Minnesota ultimately took the lead back 26-21. And that's when they got stopped on the one yard line. And Russell Wilson takes the Seahawks 95 yards down the field for the game winning touchdown. I think for me, when you look at the Seattle Seahawks team, the defensive effort is the big reason why, if I'm a Seahawks fan, I would be feeling excited because that has obviously been the one big weakness to your team so far this season. And the fact that, okay, Kirk Cousins isn't the best quarterback in the league, but you were able to hold him more than you've been able to hold some of the other teams you've played uh, good offenses like Dallas, like New England, like Miami, and uh, Minnesota is a, a solid option there. Next week, Seattle um, will have a bye week and then they'll head to Arizona. They will then host San Francisco and then go to Buffalo. So those are the next three games for Seattle, which are obviously obviously not going to be very easy at all, but I do think they're equipped to go on a nice little run here. And if their defense could gain more confidence throughout the playoffs, I think they're looking uh, at a very good spot. They're my third uh, contender for the team that had the most impressive victory of week five. And the final team that I wanted to talk about, and I think if you were to ask me, Zach, who had the most impressive win of week five, my answer for you would be Derek Carr, John Gruden, and the Las Vegas Raiders. And I'll explain why. There are a couple reasons why I was just super impressed with the Raiders in this game. And it's not as simple as, oh, they just were able to go into Arrowhead Stadium and beat the Kansas City Chiefs the defending Super Bowl champions. But let's start there. I think when you look at the way 
the Raiders and Chiefs have played over the last couple of years, it was super important going into this game that the Raiders came out hungry and they expected to get the win. You guys know when you go into Kansas City and face off against the defending Super Bowl champions, that is obviously not an easy place to play. And in the first half, Patrick Mahomes were just and Derek Carr were throwing haymakers at each other and each offense was able to respond. And I think the cool thing about the Raiders is we know that their offense is good. We saw them perform really well against the Saints. You know, we saw them perform really well uh, against some of some of the other teams like Carolina. So uh, and when you look at this Raider team, I think they showed you that they can win in a couple different ways in this game. We've seen Derek Carr, Darren Waller, Josh Jacobs, Hunter Renfro, guys like that, along with the Raiders' offensive line, really take over a game. The surprising thing for me in this game was the fact that the Raiders' defense was able to get the job done. And we saw stuff from Paul Gunther's defense in the second half of that game that, to be honest, we've never seen before. And it was just super surprising, especially when you consider that it was against the Kansas City Chiefs, who, you know, their defense isn't great, but they've been like a back-end top 10 defense over the last season. And Derek Carr, Darren Waller, Hunter Renfro, Josh Jacobs, and them were able to just go in there and get the job done. And I think right now, the Raiders, the Browns, whoever doesn't win the AFC South between, you know, uh, Indi- Indianapolis, Tennessee, maybe you could throw Houston in that conversation. Those are going to be the teams looking for the uh, last two wildcard spots in the AFC, because I have a pretty comfortable feeling feeling that either Pittsburgh or Baltimore, whoever doesn't win the AFC North is going to be getting that spot. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. I think the Raiders right now, if I were to predict, they would be a playoff team. Um, They had a really impressive win going on the road to Kansas City and getting the job done. Now, it's going to be interesting to see how they play the rest of the season. When you look at their schedule, it's, it's tough, but it's not impossible. The Raiders next week, I'll pull it up right here. Hold on. So right now, when you look at the Raiders' schedule, next week they will head. They'll host Tampa Bay. So they have a bye week, host Tampa Bay on a Sunday night, go to Cleveland, go to LA. So it's not too hard. They also have a, a primetime home game against the Chiefs. That will be pretty cool. So it's going to be interesting to see what the Raiders have up their sleeve. This was a team that really just missed the playoffs last year. They fell apart just at the wrong time. And I think this year, when you look at the way this offense has, has played along with Henry Ruggs, that's another guy I forgot to mention. He's just a real threat in this Raiders passing game, and he's a real help in terms of getting other guys open. Yeah, I think that could really help this Raider team for Vegas. And uh, I do think the Raiders, if you were to ask me, Zach, who had the most impressive win of week five, my answer would be Las Vegas. Not only did their offense perform on the biggest stage, but their defense did as well. Their defense was able to get the job done in a big spot on the road against Patrick Mahomes, and that is just something I've really never thought I'd say. So I just wanted to say, shout out to the Raiders and the way they pl- and the way they played and their game plan. Shout out to John Gruden, and uh, yeah, we'll see how far they'll they'll be able to take themselves from here. But I'll ask you, who do you guys think had the most impressive win of Week Five? I'm going to say the Raiders. I would throw Seattle as a possibility, just considering the fact that they didn't play that well at all and still were able to get the job done. I would throw Cleveland in that category after their big win over Indianapolis, along with Miami. If you have any other teams, please feel free to let me know. But really nice uh, segment here. Always love talking about which teams really impressed me from the NFL's previous week.